Hello and welcome to another trip report. Today I'll be flying on Alitalia. Oh wait, they're actually called Eta Airways now. In this video I'll talk about my experiences with them on one of my two recent flights. I had a flight from Rome to Catania, which I'll cover today, and another flight from Catania to Frankfurt via Milan, which didn't go quite to plan. I'll talk about that in the next video, stay tuned. You might have heard that ETA Airways has a status match going, with a lot of frequent flyer programs being accepted. Mine happened to be one of them, and I got matched to their highest status, which they call executive. I wouldn't mind getting an executive treatment, unless I need to buy a tie and glasses for it. Now, officially it doesn't launch until next year, but in the email I received it said that there were already going to be some perks when flying on ETA Airways. These are priority check-in, Fast Track Security at Rome Fiumicino and Milan Lenate, Priority Boarding, and Priority Baggage Drop Off. I assume this means that your bag comes out first at baggage claim, but uh, I don't exactly know, actually. I was able to test this out on my first flight from Rome to Catania, so I'll summarize the results quickly here, but I'll talk about it more in depth in the video. Priority Check In was no problem, I just had to show the email which confirms the status match. Presumably, here you'll also get a priority tag for your bag if you checked one. I didn't have one, so I wasn't able to check that. Fast track, on the other hand, didn't work for me. The agent at the entrance didn't want to let me enter, and I didn't want to start an argument, so I just took regular security. Maybe you have to argue to get access. I'm Japanese, so you know there's no way that's going to happen. Priority boarding didn't really exist. I mean it did, except it didn't. I'll, I'll talk about it once we are at the gate. So overall, it was a rather lackluster experience, but officially the frequent flight program isn't even launched yet, so take this how you will. If I get the chance, I'll fly with them again next year, to see how it is by then. After clearing security, I walked, and walked, and walked to the E-Gates, where my flight was going from. It felt like a long walk. Which I didn't mind, but if you're in a hurry, that might be a problem. I came by an Alitalia lounge on the way, which was closed. I assume ETA Always is going to reuse and open these again once their frequent flyer program actually launches. Since there was some time until my flight went, I checked out the Plaza Premium lounge. To be clear, this was not included in the ticket, but I managed to get in through my credit card. It is quite large, and offers a lot of seating space. I decided on this little cubicle to take a little nap. And when I woke up, I left again. That's why there isn't a lot of footage. If you wanted some. I don't know. Anyways, the gate from our flight was E19, so I headed there. From all the people at the gate, it looked like a decently full flight. I was hoping to get a glimpse of my plane, but that endeavor went rather unsuccessfully, as you might be able to see. Let's talk about what happened when boarding started. They announced that they would board priority customers first, but the line in front of the counter had already formed, and with everyone having to queue up in one line to have the temperature measured, there was no way in heaven I was getting on that plane before the mob. Again, maybe complaining would have helped, but Boarding last isn't bad either, especially if you're not planning to engage in strategic warfare to claim your overhead bin space. So I just waited until most of the crowd had disappeared into the jet bridge before I followed them. My seat for the flight was originally 28D, until the computer vehemently disagreed by halting my advance through the boarding pass check. Whatever the reason was, I was reseated to 32D, and I was finally able to enter the jet bridge. I was hoping to find at least one plane with the ETA livery, but I guess they haven't gotten around to painting any of the aircraft yet. The only thing indicating the new airline is the operated by ETA sticker next to the door. In fact, I only think they have repainted one aircraft, the one which says born in 2021 on the side. Once inside the plane, I got to see the cabin. Like the exterior, the interior also still had Alitalia branding everywhere. It looked a little dated, but not in a bad way. The leather seats actually look quite nice, 
and I prefer these over the newer super slim seats, which tend to be harder and less comfortable. I guess that extra comfort had to come from somewhere though, since the seat pitch looked to be quite short. I headed to my new seat, which was in the last row of the plane, and squeezed in. Some people might actually be wondering why I'd take an aisle seat when I was planning to take footage. Well, Ita Ois doesn't allow you to select the seat, even a check-in, if you book their lowest fare. So you're pretty much stuck with whatever you get, unless you're willing to pay. Luckily for me, the row I was reseated to happened to be completely empty, so I did manage to get a window view after all. The seats themselves are really tight though. I'm not particularly tall at 172 centimeters, and my knees almost touched the seat in front. If you had to put your bag on the seat in front of you, and they were neighbors, I wouldn't know where to put my feet. I didn't measure the seat space, but this felt like the tightest configuration I've experienced so far, and taller people will definitely be uncomfortable here. The cabin itself is nothing special, although it seems quite dated. It even had controls and an audio port for in-flight entertainment, although I highly doubt it does anything. Judging from the overhead console, the aircraft itself shouldn't be too old though. It does feature individual air outlets, which is normal for short-haul aircraft like this. The safety card is already ETA branded and looks like this. The air sickness bag, however, still has Alitalia branding. I guess they still have to get through old stock here. We got going quite quickly and taxied to a runway. I looked out for planes that might have the ETA livery, but I wasn't able to find any. Maybe next time. Soon enough, we took off from a cloudy Rome and headed to Catania, where the weather would hopefully be better. The flight itself was quite uneventful, and I slept for most of it. The flight is 1 hour and 15 minutes, so I didn't expect any service. In that regard, I was positively surprised, because a free drink service was offered with a good selection of water, juice and soft drinks. Soon enough, we came in to land at Catania. After a short taxi, we arrived at a remote stand.
Boarding by stairs is always nice, since I got some nice views of the plane. By the way, the registration starts with EI, meaning it's registered in Ireland. The majority of ETA's fleet is actually leased, and only a handful of planes are actually owned by the airline itself. A lot of big aircraft leasing companies are located in Ireland. I suppose because taxes are cheap? I don't really know actually. A short bus ride later and we were at the baggage claim. That's it for this short trip report on Italy's new flag carrier. Stay tuned for the second flight, where I encountered some flight irregularities, and see how ETA Airways deals with those. Anyways, I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or advice, please comment down below. If you liked the video, I'd be very happy if you liked or subscribed to my channel. As always, I wish you safe travels, and I'll see you in the next video.